around the world, around the world, around the world, etc. My main man Murray lent me this, the pen meet. He said, here's a Mont Blanc around the world in 80 days. Double broad nib. You should probably review this. And so I shall. Now, I don't have the box. So you can't see the box, but I have the pen. I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample. And it's quite a joy to use because that double broad nib is something. And then we'll talk about likes and dislikes. And all of this in just 12 minutes and not 80 days. Let's get started. Okay, here we go with the Mont Blanc around the world in 79 plus one days. Here we see the pen right next to a Pilot Metropolitan, so it's a nice size. Not overly huge, but this is basically a 146 slash Le Grand size, and that I find is a size that works for a lot of people. Now, there's a lot to say about this pen. I don't have the box to show you, but I will talk you through all the different options. First of all, nib range, huge, extra fine, fine, medium, broad, double broad, oblique medium, and oblique broad in 18K. This is a double broad nib, and it's a delight. You'll see that in just a bit. You pay for this 698 euros and 35 cents. That's without VAT, um, and that's pretty much all there's to it. Uh, so, you know, price may vary a little bit all over the world, but that's the price in Europe. There's a lot going on, right? So, Jules Verne, uh, based on his books, the Indigo Blue and the wave pattern that you see on the cap, a little hard to show you. I'll try to zoom in a bit. This wavy pattern, it's hard to catch it in the light, I'm sorry. There, that, at, with the Indigo, that um, is meant to represent uh, the uh, the ocean part of um, um, uh, Phileas Fogg's journey. He was going to travel around the world in 80 days, right? So the, the ocean part is represented by that. There is, from that same part of the journey, uh, a steamboat engraved onto the cap, uh, which I think is nice. Um, I think it's cool. It looks like a... is that one of those... what do you call that? Now I'm confused in Dutch. We call it a radar boat. Is that what you call it? Like you have you have one of those wheels on the side. Anyway, it's there. Um, the clip has a lacquered ace of spades because Phileas, I keep wanting to say Phineas because of Phineas Gage. This is my profession. I'm sorry. Phileas Fogg um, kind of made this wager to travel around the world as he was playing. So card, card game. Here's the ace of spades, and other, the other um, symbols from the other uh, suits of cards are on the cap. So here, for example, uh, is, a, is a clover, no, what, what do you call these things? I, I, I don't play cards, people. Uh, here's a heart. So it's on different parts, and it's kind of hidden. It's kind of fun to go and, and look for them. I thought that was, uh, was pretty well done. Again, I'm not a card player. Now... Um, You can find all those, yeah, if all those suits, I said that. Uh, then there is on the uh, finial here, and we'll, we'll go over more of the parts, but I mean on this finial here is the number 80, well 80 days, right? And then on the back is 18 days, 1-8 days. So we have 8-0 and 1-8. Um, that's the, the first leg of the journey uh, uh, took 18 days. Um, two days shorter than actually was expected. Then we have um, on the nib some more numbers. Um, we, we have, it's a little hard to read without a loop, but we have 2 and 20 October. Um, those are the start dates and end dates of Phileas' journey. They're on the nib. Uh, and then uh, also on the nib, Again, I don't know how well you can see it, but there will be a close-up on the website. Is a hot air balloon, which refers to another story from Jules Verne. Okay, so those are all the great details. Um, some other stuff that, that, that stands out. On top, of course, we have the Mont Blanc logo on the finial. Uh, we have the clip. The clip works well. It's not too tight, not too loose. Uh, we have the center band that says Mont Blanc Meisterstück. 
we have the barrel and then we have the sort of this looks like portholes on the piston turning knob uh, the piston turning knob itself uh, and we have of course the whole like this 146 uh, type pen so we have the ink windows um, we have the threads the section section tapers down flares out a little bit and we have the beautiful 4810 uh, nib with all those little details it also says Mont Blanc again there will be a close-up of the nib on the website feed and again double broad nib uh, and I will say this one is a real pleasure to use now instead of me trying to convince you that this nib is a pleasure to use let me just show you so here we have our paper I'm almost done with this notebook fortunately because it's starting to fall apart here we have Mont Blanc no, Mont Blancs what the hell um, around the world in 80 days this is a double broad nib in 18 K and the ink I don't know this is how I got it the nib is just a delight quick it's juicy it has a slight stub like quality to it um, it is a piston filled pen in case you were not familiar with Mont Blanc sorry piston turning knob ink window barrel fills well not all the way there but barrel fills with ink pretty cool um, just a lovely writer very nice very smooth I do really really like it and it is definitely double broad a very nice wide line great for signatures etc and as you can see I've done nothing to this I haven't primed the feet or anything starts up straight away nice wet does everything it's supposed to do and everything you would expect of a double broad nib nice and wet as very broad nibs often are even though they're marketed as round nibs you do see this natural line variation that's just because there's so much tipping material so you tend to get a wider downstroke and a narrower side stroke that's that's just the way it is um, that's kind of fun though because you get the line variation uh, I, I I wouldn't push this nib I mean it's not a flex nib if you want that get their calligraphy nib um, but you do get some line variation out of it which I do think is quite nice For those of you who enjoy such a thing reverse writing often with stub like nibs not so successful because it's not round tipping right it's a bit more squarish as you can also very much with the naked eye see that it's more squarish reverse writing doesn't work too well it gets scratchy not very pleasant advantage of course is that you can do more calligraphic things with such a nib and that's kind of fun in its own regard what's also a lot of fun is talking about what I like and what I don't like about this pen sorry for this terrible segue but there we are what do I like and what do I not like about the round the world in 80 days Mont Blanc I have to say there's a lot I like about it it has to me an understated elegance the deep blue indigo and rhodium trim in my mind works well together I like that this is a pen that does not have 20 or 30 different things bolted onto it it looks just like a 146 in a special outfit it has nice details without being obtrusive and I think it works the most important thing is the nib is something else it's a beautiful writer and I can honestly say this is a fantastic nib and I really really like it that's great too when you buy a pen this kind of price it's nice if it writes properly and I can't say anything but it absolutely does lovely nib it looks cool it writes well an understated elegance it's from a distance looks just like a blue and rhodium pen so anyway you get up close you start to see interesting details like the the, the steamship and the, and the, and the little uh, ace of spades and all that stuff I like that a lot I like that simple elegance are the things I don't like so much was well, not cheap at 700 euros but let's face it it's a Mont Blanc I'm surprised it's not more than that having said that it has everything it's supposed to do gold nib piston felled in my mind nice looks I don't have any real cons it's not cheap 
but you buy something and you get a fantastic writing experience. I don't know what more you could wish for. And as a result, I'm going to go with, actually find this, a really nice pen. And sometimes there isn't much to complain about. So be it. I hope this was useful. A very kind thank you to Murray for lending me the pen. I really appreciate it. I hope this was useful. Let me know what you think of the pen. And I'm glad I see you later. Bye-bye.